innovators, I'm Todd Wyant, and welcome to the Bridging the Gap podcast presented by Applied Software Great Tech Group. You're invited to join our MEP and construction innovation adventure with a mission to propel this great industry forward. My guest today is Audrey Grubesic. Audrey is the owner of Modular Sure Site, an offsite construction management service company. She has firsthand experience of project management on site using offsite solutions. Audrey's large offsite network has evolved by collaborating with experts in the industry through the media platform offsitedirt.com. She believes we need to improve the modular construction process, create a positive work culture and mindset, automate systems, continue learning and collaborating with technology driven services, leaders, and innovative companies. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thank you, Todd. I'm really super excited about being here. I've heard your other podcasts in the past and um, great, great show. Love being here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for the, the conversation and to, to have you and unpack the, the world of, of modular, one of our, our favorite topics around here. So looking forward to it. Uh, before we really dive in, how'd you get your, your start in construction industry? Um, it started about eight years ago. I was actually in luxury custom home building. And, um, it kind of went in this journey where I was doing marketing and sales. I was doing branding for the company. And, um, through that, I started learning about the interaction with people and the process of building, um, about five years ago, I started modular sure site, my own general contracting company for modular builds. I went at that time I was in Colorado and I went to about 18 different retailers, people or companies that were selling modular homes and uh, started learning the system, started, started seeing stuff on the East Coast, started seeing stuff on the West Coast. And I really believe that this is the next evolution of building only because we don't have the same trade base. We just don't have the same abilities to have high purchasing power. And so I was just seeing all these benefits. So I kind of jumped in with both feet. I actually met over a hundred contractors in Denver trying to work with me because at the time I needed a general contractor to have their building license in order to do these projects. And through that process, I met this amazing company, 303 Development, and Greg and I kind of built this great partnership and started this journey through modular construction. So in 2017, I picked up four of my own projects. They were ranged anywhere from 385,000 up to 1.2 million. I made every single mistake that you can make. I was in four different areas, working with four different municipalities, doing a custom home in um, the mountains and then working in other area, other mountain towns. So I was driving about five to 600 miles a week going through the process, learning all of this, and then executing these projects with modular construction. So it was really fascinating to see all the pieces come together and to work with four different companies, um, four different building factories, and, and, and really t kind of taking place and understanding the process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the whole journey with construction is how do you how do you formulate your process? How do you put the pieces together? So offsite just became this thing that I, I started really loving. And from that kind of what you're doing, Todd, is um, I started working with Devin Tilly at the Art of Construction and we started a podcast called System Build Lifestyles. And through that, I started meeting people on the East and West Coast. And it was super fun because when you're in a new process of building, you can't possibly learn everything but you can certainly learn through other people's experiences and conversations, kind of like what we're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, love that. Well, you said that there were some, some kind of big mistakes <laughs> along the way. What do you think were some of the kind of the biggest learning uh, that you that I think took from the, this? The biggest thing with modular construction is it's similar and not similar to traditional construction. Um, there's just a different method of how the whole process works. In construction, everything kind of comes together. You put your budget together, you put your team together, and then you're building on site. So you're going through that whole process. With modular construction, everything starts at the beginning of pre-construction. You're putting your pre-construction team together. You're putting all your assets together. You're talking to the factory. You're selecting everything, usually online. 
Um, so there's a lot of things, there's a lot of time reduced in that process. And then there's a lot of learning curves because with modular, many people might not know, um, it's a form of construction. So basically it's a box or a module. I kind of refer to it as like a Lego block. Yeah. that is fully furnished in the factory, right? It's an assembly line. So it's going through 18 or 19 different stations. Instead of a house getting built in eight months on the site, it's literally getting built in the factory anywhere from 21 to 30 days. The whole house is built in the factory. So you learn that process, right? Which is a very unique process. And the box has to be fully constructed, quality control. It's inspected by the state. It goes through a rigorous control process, and it's also built to this high quality standard because it has to travel on a truck to the location. So once it gets to the location, then the boxes are basically wrapped. You have a set and crane crew that comes there to the location. You have your foundation ready to go. You already have your permits pulled. So everything's kind of working simultaneously. And as those boxes get to the site, then they are picked up by a crane. They're assembled on site. The set and stitch crew kind of connect the boxes together and connect it to the foundation. Again, another inspection. And then you go into the site work. So that's where the traditional construction part comes in. You're still pulling your utilities. You're doing your excavation. You're doing your foundation. You're doing all of your MEPs, you know, your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Mm -hmm. And you're connecting these boxes together in a system that is created by the factory and approved by the state. So it's a different system altogether because all the things that you used to have, all these different people on site, you're eliminating the work on site, but you're also becoming a faster solution provider in order to get the process done. So when I was looking at from the very beginning, I did a 12-month project on a mountain home in Keystone, which typically takes anywhere traditionally 18 to 36 months. So that's a huge benefit. And every project that I kept doing, I kept getting faster. And I started creating these processes and understanding the formulas and knowing how to communicate with the factory. And our last project after it was set on the foundation took 28 working days. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> Huge difference. And, and so it's a process, right? And from that, when COVID hit a couple of years ago, I started realizing that I'm truly, really, really good at communicating the process, talking to the factories. And so I kind of shifted my business model from doing projects to then consulting in projects. Mm -hmm. So now my company helps Builders and developers uh, work on their very first modular project so that they can understand the formula, they can create the right team, they can select the right factory, they can have this partnership of evolving the process and understanding it so they can have success on their first one. Yeah, interesting. So one of the uh, pushbacks that I, I hear around modular is, oh, we can't really go full force into modular in construction because we're not building the, the same standard widget like a, a manufacturer would. Everything is, is different. Each project is different. There's different demands, different criteria. We're building unicorns, not standard widgets. How do you respond to that? So I see it in, in different ways. Um, there's different solutions in offsite. Maybe modular volumetric might not be your solution, right? Because there's lots of criteria of how it's going to work. Sure but maybe a panelized solution might be a better solution or a data center where the data center is actually already created and you can use that system to plug and play. Mm -hmm. There's modular elevator systems now where maybe you already have a project that's already created and all of a sudden you have to be ADA compliant. What do you do? You can use, a, you can actually have a company that can bring two modular systems together and to the site and you can do it within 30 days. So I agree with a lot of people that are out there that um, don't feel like this might be the solution for them. But then I also look at where is the rest of your labor force coming? Maybe you are a developer that has 300 homes. There's no capacity for you to have enough of those people. 
on your site. It just doesn't work. We don't have them. Right. right. So I think there's different ways to explore different things. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so I, I think that there's some, just some murkiness and confusion in, in the process. It, you laid it out really well of there's different kind of levels and, uh, you know, you don't have to go full on in the deep end right from the beginning on, on modular. Right. There's maybe a, a misconception that if you're going to go down the, the modular path, you have to go from zero to hundred and you know, two seconds flat. That's it's just not you don't, realistic. Right? <laughs> and I think that's, right. And I think that's why, you know, when we were talking, Todd, and I started offsite dirt, I wanted people to know that there's different solutions to building. There's also building science. There's also high performance. There's passive house. Mm-hmm. You get to choose now. You get to be educated in a formula that works for your company. In my perspective and things that I'm seeing, I do believe in volumetric, but again, it has to be the right solution for the right development. Mm-hmm. But either way, in the next 10 years, there has to be some kind of system that you're going to use that's going to evolve your um, efficiencies. And the only way we can do that is kind of like the car system where you have a car and it's created in a factory and it comes to the site. Your phone created in a factory comes to you at your home. All these things are evolving technologies for a reason because we don't have the same trade base as we did 50 years ago. We also are challenged with, and I know you know this being in, you know, HVAC and engineering in that industry, we're having supply issues. We're having issues with building materials. So if you're working with a factory or another manufacturing um, facility, their buying power is greater. Mm -hmm. So that reduces your um, costs because they're buying at a higher volume, which again is a cost savings for you. Yeah. Uh, So since you brought up the supply side of things, you know, I I see a a fairly seismic shift happening in the industry right now between technology and labor issues, change management, sustainability. There's a a whole host of of issues. How do you use the supply chain to your benefit in dealing with all these shifts and moving trends that are happening? You know, it's difficult. Um, What I'm doing now is I'm actually finding more and more distributors. Uh, Wesco is one of those distributors. So what they do is they create, they they have 18,000 employees. They have um, locations all over the world. And what they're doing is they're interviewing and networking with vendors. And then they're trying to bring in those supplies from different areas. So I think that's one good solution. I'm also, it's really interesting because I'm starting to find um, high performance materials. Last week I was in back in Colorado um, and I went to this place called Sasco that actually does high performance in caulks and sealants. There are more and more products that are becoming available to us because we are in such need of them. So those really big companies that were supplying everything like Georgia Pacific, for example, There's now other companies that are providing these same things in different categories or different opportunities. So we're starting to see this shift and this evolution of innovative products. And those efficiencies help us with our build cycles or our build product. Um, For a lot of people, passive house, they may not understand what that is, but basically it's measuring energy in a home. And there's a a sophisticated system of how the exterior interior walls are built in order to save energy. So there are different ways that we're starting to see things evolve. And I think that the supply chain is challenged, but I also am seeing because of what we went through a couple of years ago, more innovative stuff that's actually happening in the United States. It's really interesting when we start looking at these huge manufacturers, even like Tesla, Mm -hmm you know, a lot of them were going to be overseas. And what has happened with the dynamic of transportation costs, fuel costs, all these different things, a lot of them now are regaining traction in the United States, which I think is a great success for all of us. Creates jobs, creates new products, and it brings this evolution of how we can start getting more supplies. Yeah. I I, know. I totally agree with that. That the last two years that you see that the culture has kind of rallied around that we need to we need to bring manufacturing back, not just give kind of 
frankly, lip service to it, but actually do it in action because there's there's real ramifications if we don't have manufacturing here on site. Uh, with kind of those different trends, what, what do you see as a, a big trend that is coming in the world of modular that may not be super obvious to a, a casual observer? So what I am seeing, which is really interesting, so we're going through this massive housing crisis. We have uh, 5.34 million homes that need to be fulfilled today, right? That's a huge number. So what I'm seeing is we see a lot of build to rent that's starting to happen. Um, We're starting to see old shopping centers and old um, maybe apartment buildings or old storage places that are now becoming living spaces. We're seeing more remodeling in those areas. The other thing that I'm seeing is large developing and large building companies are now actually resourcing and creating their own factories for fulfillment. Um, There's more and more development needed. And because of, again, reduced labor shortage, a lot of people not going in um, and back into the labor force because it is very demanding. We're starting to see more trade schools. We're starting to see more innovation and we're starting to see more and more and more modular factories being built Mm -hmm. and more products coming. Um, You look at the example of Boxable, which is basically this box that opens up. It's a collapsible system. It opens up to a box and it delivers a home within days. Great solution. We're seeing in China, they do these same kind of um, creations of these box systems for efficiencies. I think that we're going to start trending in those areas, but I also see high performance in building science really breaking through because people that have the ability to build a home now want a home that's healthy. They want a home that's more efficient in energy. And so that's another sector that I'm seeing open up. Yeah. Interesting. So working to the the end goal of, of really creating a, a, better, more uh, efficient, streamlined process in modular. What does that process really look like to you? And then how do we, as an industry, go about accomplishing that? I think it's evolving. Um, Even just being in this industry for five years, it has been a massive overhaul. I am seeing in the modular construction space how we're starting to build more efficiencies. There are people that are having factories that are doing steel frame factories. Um, They're also doing um, wood frame factories. So there's just a different process. When you use steel frame, you can build five stories and higher. When you're using wood frame, usually it's five stories and lower. It all depends on the need and what I'm seeing in the evolution of factory development is more and more multifamily is needed and more and more multifamily is being developed, um, which I think is a great thing because when we're talking about multifamily, we're talking about first time home buyers being able to move into a condo and have a condo at a price point that can actually reasonably fit their um, wages, mm-hmm. right? When I, when I started in the marketplace, I bought a condo because that was the first lead into buying a house, which we have separated that system. So I see multifamily in apartments, condos. I also see efficiencies in hotels that are happening now um, fully. There's a company in Poland called DMD Modular and Edwina is the CEO over there. She's brilliant. She's actually an architect that's the CEO as well. And they are creating these box systems where they are completely fully furnished. All the, all the furnishings are actually um, connected to the boxes so they don't shift. And they're shipping them from Poland to New York, right? They did a big project there. So there's these efficiencies that are happening. Again, it's just on the demand of the area. It it depends on if we're doing just single family homes. And everybody kind of thinks modular is manufactured, which it's really not. Manufactured is created with a whole nother building classification called HUD. And then modular is built with IRC, International Residential Code, which is exactly the same code that we do traditional building with. So it all depends. I'm seeing some custom factories doing custom homes. There's a lot of them on the East Coast and the West Coast. In the Midwest, I'm seeing them more as a traditional, here's our floor plan. You can change some of the rooms, the design a little bit. Um, you can select a couple of different varying products or you can build, you know, maybe build stucco on site. 
but we're going to conform to our plan and not deviate from that. Mm -hmm. Nice. How do you, how do you lead others in this process to not only get them, you know, coming along, but get them really excited and to, to share your passion for the modular journey? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because um, there's a lot of challenges out there, right? Um, I just kind of put it like this. Every person that comes into building or construction, there's these things that you face that are the unknowns. You're going to face challenges. There's going to be something that happens and you're going to have to come up with a solution. So your first project is always the hardest project, right? And a lot of people that have been in building for 20 years, they're like, I'm never going to go to modular. I'm never going to do that because I have my system. This is how it mm -hmm. works. This is what I want to do. But what is happening um, through this process is they're getting more and more and more orders because we're in this housing crisis and they're sitting there going, okay, I have 100 employees. I can build 25 houses a year, but my order is to build 50 houses in one year. How am I going to do that? So that's the lead in to understanding offsite solutions. Mm -hmm. That's where we're seeing the enterprise come into this um, unknown world. And the crazy thing is modular has been around for a hundred years. We had Buckme Buckmeister Fuller, who was the guy that created the geodesic dome. And that was a kit that actually came to the site and you built this dome. So these aren't, these aren't new innovative practices. We are just seeing that with the amount of demand, with the amount of efficiencies that we can create, it's a conversation that we're having more and more. Mm -hmm. And kind of like you, Todd, we're educating all the time. We're always helping, always educating. And that's why I created Offsite Dirt because I thought if more and people could go to that site and start learning about all these different construction forms, then they can be more educated into either moving forward with panelization or moving forward with containers or some other solution to help them have more victories on their on their building projects. Yeah, now, I think you bring up an, an excellent point there. Uh, that modular has been around. It's not a it's not a new concept. It's not a unproven concept. I, I feel like so often the the conversation kind of leans in in that direction that this is this is something new and, and cutting edge and you know construction historically is more risk averse but I, I think being able to, to to flip the dynamic on its head and be like hey guys this has been <laughs> this has been around this has been tested it is mm -hmm. it works this is not a uh, a new cutting edge uh innovation though there's a huge innovation behind modular and the direction that it's going and there's the potential is there, but I, I think it's, uh, it, it's not as unknown as, as what a lot of people have the perception of it. Agreed. And I think that's just it. We're starting to see more and pe more people ask for it. We're, tar we're starting to see, like I said, developers are having these conversations. I'm going to a conference in Chicago in September. Um, it's all builders and developers. It's about 800 of them. And the company that is providing the, the event and the information said more and more people are asking about it. But they just don't know where to find it. They don't know where to find the answers or start researching or how do they you know, start looking at it. And so that's a good thing, right? We're starting to evolve. We're starting to change. We're starting to build our own systems. I was talking with a general contractor in Colorado about three weeks ago. They've been doing traditional construction for 20 years. And one of the developers asked, hey, can we, can we consider doing modular? Can we look at this? And it was a whole building curve for him to learn to create these systems a little bit different than what he was used to. But since that conversation two years ago, he has never went back. He just keeps doing more and more developments with modular construction because, again, there's proven efficiencies in this product. The other thing that's really cool about modular construction is its cost certainty, which I mean by that is... When you create your plans, you do all your selections, you create everything with the design envelope with the, the factory, they can take that and tell you exactly how much it's going to cost. And typically, without any changes, you have that cost all the way through the project. Mm 
it's not changing. Mm -hmm. That's huge because as we know with construction, there's all these variable costs. There's all these things that seem to come up. You can never have enough money in your contingency. There's something that just happens and the project starts getting out of control. Well, with the building in particular, it's a it, it's it's a standard cost for what they're going to be doing and producing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I, I love about what you're doing with with offsite dirt is is really helping in that that education component and getting the the conversation going. I, I think one of the, the big hurdles in the industry is that education component and kind of debunking some myths that have built up in the industry. Modular is a, a great example of that. How have you found uh, success in getting more people involved in sharing their success stories and and not holding it so kind of tight to the the vest of a, a secret sauce? That's so funny that you say that because there's two large organizations that really support the industry, and um, they're a closed network. So I could never get enough information until I started reaching out to others. And let's just look at it this way. This form of construction is happening in other countries for years and generations, like concrete homes in South Africa. Um, in Norway, they have energy efficient modular construction that they're doing. I mean, we are the slow adapters in the United States when we're looking at mm -hmm. this. So it's kind of like these conversations, Todd, that you and I share. Really, it's really bridging the gap and bringing people together to understand that we can help you understand it a little bit more. We can speak the language with you. And it's just bringing the people together that want to share information. And that's why I started I started actually this thing called Offsite Construction Series every month because nobody was giving me any information. I kept asking for it. I kept going to factories and the CEOs were so busy. They couldn't really un give me all the details that I needed. And so that was the only way that I could start having these conversations. And they're becoming more widespread. Um, Ken Semler is kind of one of the early adapters. He started about 30 years ago. His company is called Impreza Modular. And Ken is fascinating because he's went through this whole evoluting process. First, he was a modular builder. Then he was kind of a developer. Then he started his company into basically he was kind of like a broker. He was bringing in all these different plans, working with all these different factories to fulfill client orders. And now he's built a franchise and they just started their first factory. This is how much, how fast this evolution process is coming. So it, it is hard, Todd. It, it's a constant conversation. I think it's things where the more and more we can start talking about it, where people don't have to have so much fear about it. It's like the fear of the unknown makes everybody doubt it mm -hmm. and, um, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be fearful. It just has to be understood. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, I'm from where I am uh, and I'm in a bubble admittedly, but it, I feel like the conversations are happening more and more people are, are starting to get excited to, to get in the the conversation and, and really share the experiences. But how do we, how do we start kind of reaching those, uh, concentric circles going out to not just the innovators of construction and kind of those early adopters, but how do we start reaching the, the masses more in construction? I think, I think the solution is to be able to see more projects done, right? Um, Marriott, that's the one company that everybody heard about that was the hotel mm -hmm. chain uh, or the hotel brand that was doing modular, but they weren't the first company to do it. There are, there are so many large brands that are mil building, building with modular construction, but they don't go out and announce it. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just they don't want to deal with um, the bureaucracy of people's judgments. I don't know. But this is happening. Like, it's kind of like... The only way I can explain it, it's like when the computer first came, <clears throat> everyone's like, oh my gosh, I don't want the computer. I don't want to do that. I don't know what that is. And now we use it every day, right? And it's like evolved. Right. I feel we're in that same element with modular construction. It's kind of this 
quiet hum that's going on. We're starting to see in Colorado, especially, <clears throat> they're more and more open to it. They actually just wrote a, I believe it was a, and I don't, I mean, I'm, I can't remember the total amount, but I think it was $40 million that is going to be distributed to modular factories and companies that are building with modular construction. Because until we can evolve the process and start including this, we're never going to meet the demand. And even, and here's the thing. I'm not trying to take away business from any builder or general contractor, because to be honest with you, there is I mean, 5 million homes. You can't possibly, even if you had a hundred factories running at full capacity could fulfill everything. Right. There's so much demand, right? All as I'm looking at is how do you benefit your company to acquire higher profitability? Well, the way that you can achieve that is if you are creating systems of higher um, output. So instead of building 20 homes, if you can build 50 homes and you're using less people and you're orchestrating your development in a way where you have this process, it changes the dynamic. You're profitable. And what does that profitability do for the general public? It gives us more houses and we need more homes. That's what this is all about. We need to house more people as fast as we possibly mm -hmm. can. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if I could give you all construction power and you could kind of snap your fingers and innovate one aspect of the industry, what would you innovate? I am working on something very interesting right now. Uh, I am working with a development team that is going to be building a modular factory with all sustainable materials. So if I could do one thing, I would want to build more products with more sustainable, higher quality of living standards than what is out there. And I'd love to see it built modular just so that we can keep up with the demand mm -hmm. and offer a reasonable, obtainable price point so more people could actually own a home, be in a home if they so choose. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I think that's the, the way of the future to combining the sustainable products with modular. I, I think that's where, uh, I me mean, personally, I think that's where the, the industry is, is going to be going over the next, you know, 10 years or so, hopefully. Uh, I, I think all the, the writing is on, on the wall and things are, are lining up in that direction. So it's a great one. Uh, I think, I think we are too. And maybe even if it's not modular, maybe it's a panelized program where the panels are created for the building. And what does that do? That allows instead of six to 10 weeks of building on site to doing all your framing, to have it all done in one week. Right. Holy cow, that just cut uh, you know two months off of your build schedule, which also helps for financing. You're not you're not um, expounding additional interest to funding your project because it's done faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not even to bring up all the, the safety benefits as well, too, by having it in a controlled Correct. setting and, and not, I mean, what's Absolutely a, a real job site on, on site is, is risky. You know, you know, there's obviously an offsite that you have risk there as well, but it's, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot less in a, a controlled setting than out on the field. Yeah. And I think like, even when I look at your industry, when we look at engineers, we look at HVAC, we look at plumbing, we look at those superior systems. How do we create those systems where they can have efficiencies too? Imagine being a um, an HVAC supplier and you go and you have, or, or an installer, and instead of you know working in a building, um, an apartment building, let's just say it's six apartments, and it taking you, I don't know, I, let's just say taking you five months to complete all of that work. And now all of that work is done. And now you just have to make connections to having those efficiencies. Wow, that just increased your workload of being able to acquire more jobs, mm -hmm. right? And having to work less time and being able to move faster. And I'm not saying faster is a good thing. I'm just saying that there's more efficiencies in being able to create these systems. Mm -hmm. And and they're evolving, right? I mean, we're seeing, it's interesting because in the UK, I work with um, this company called Advancing Prefabrication. 
They're so interesting because they have these networks of people that are in offsite, um, some kind of offsite or, or adaptive solution. Maybe it's um, single um panel, maybe it's multi-panel, maybe it's a data center, maybe it's volumetric or, or it's panelization. But the key component to the whole solution is that we're starting to build pods or we're starting to build these streamlined systems to help us to get to the end line faster. And we don't need as many people to execute it, but we also have these efficiencies to create more business. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, Todd, I think things are evolving. I think we're just at the cusp of it. I I love to see more people have more success stories and being able to celebrate those stories. You can always, I mean, if you're in multifamily, you can go to the Modular Building Institute. They actually have a great network of people. If you're in the National Home Builders Association, there's this building structures group that is evolving. So we're starting to see Autodesk. Uh, which is a huge software supplying company, is is in offsite solutions. Like everyone that I know, even the largest construction companies are starting to put their foot somewhere somehow into an offsite solution. They all know it's yeah. coming. Yeah, absolutely. Listeners will hear me say this all the time, but I think it's the such an exciting time to be in construction right now because the possibilities and the potential of this industry that been around for forever, (laughs) but the potential is just enormous. I don't think there's ever been as much potential and possibility in construction as this moment that we're living in now. And that's super exciting for me uh, to, to see that. And it's, and it's exciting, you know, and it's exciting that we can have like even your show, you know, bridging the gap and being able to bring these people together and have these collective conversations because 20 years ago, it wasn't around. We didn't even know we had a choice to be able to listen to other people's expertise in the areas that they work. And now we actually have that. So the solutions are here and we're able to hear them and and talk through them and research them now and and see how things are changing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh So how do people find out more information and connect with you? Um, they can always go to offsitedirt.com or they can actually connect with me at modular and it's S U R E S I T E.com. Um, also follow me on LinkedIn. I have, um, I post almost every day. I try to give information and get people out there. Um, it's Audrey Grabesic. It's not an easy one. Um, but hopefully people will find us and, um, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. This has been I've been following your podcast. I think it's amazing. And I think what you're doing with your team and um, the company of education is is really needed. So thank you. Yeah. Well, likewise, likewise. Uh, Final question for you. What does innovation mean to you? The expansion of new wisdom. I like it. Short and sweet, but uh, packs a punch. I like it. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, (laughs) Audrey, thanks so much for taking the time and and joining the show today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here, Todd.